At least he's out of the way. Now we just need to get inside. They're in there. Fiora and the Golden Mechon. Fiora! Shook! What's up? Did you see something? No. You did see something. All right. It was the Silver Mechon. Fiora. She's definitely inside the fortress. All right. At least we know what to expect. So, Fiora is inside. I can't let that vision come true. I have to save her. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles. In the last episode, we came here to the very outskirts of Galahad Fortress and Schutz. Sword Valley, good one. Sword Valley, where we fought Mumka, Metal Face, and defeated him once and for all. Um, and this episode, we are going to be moving on into the fortress properly. There's a lot of um, empty space uh, below us, which is slightly nerve-wracking when moving on here. Like, I, It's a really funny thing with me in games. I'm not... In real life, or in games, afraid of heights in any way. But when I'm moving somewhere where you can fall off easily, I'm, I guess I'm always just kind of aware of what the reset is if you fall and have to, you know, walk back to where you want to be. So I always get kind of slightly edgy, as you, eh, pardon the pun, um, if, like, when I'm walking around edges in games. Oh. Ooh, skills. Um, Ryan has learned increases attack power. That's very Ryan. He's nearly towards the end of his entire tree because he hasn't got a th fourth tree yet. Uh, and... Oh, Shulk and Ryan have, have gone up in Affinity. Um, so Shulk can get something from... Shulk and Ryan, Shulk and Dunman have gone up in Affinity. Uh, that will be a handy one for Shulk. And as for Dunman, we can get medium equipment, which we already have, and restores H. Sure, why not? With that... Oh, let's go straight into another fight, I guess. Yeah, this is... Again, I've, I've talked about this in the past. It's some of this game's weaker points, is where you're just doing a lot of, like, dungeon-like stuff, where you're essentially just going in a relatively straight line with some puzzles along it and doing a lot of fighting. And it's just a bit weaker from a, um, from a let's play perspective because then I have to, you know, I, I, I haven't got as much going on that I can talk about. It's just doing a lot of fighting. Oh, we've all been toppled by these destruct. I mean, this isn't destruction unit. These are melee units. These guys, again, this type, uh, all have a fairly vicious um, topple spike, so don't topple them. Even though it's so tempting with melee style like kick and spear brink. And I'm about to be back, but that- Ooh, that was weird. We must have been in something's exhaust. Oh, well, you can see over there, for example, these little carriers that we've seen dropping Mechon literally on Colony um, 9 at the very beginning during the kind of initial Mechon attack on Colony 9 is the only time we've seen them, and I think the only time we do see these kind of little Mechon carriers. Mildly interesting. <laughs> we knocked one of them off. That's funny. Oh, we got an achievement simply smashing. I assume that's for changing the future with visions. A set number of times. Put on screen what it is, Doctor. Any useful equipment? I feel like we've got a lot of equipment of late. Oh, Dunman's got the blade boots, which are an agility up four, which is a very Dunman thing. You can see why the set is good for Dunman. Tension, strength, agility, heal with auras active. It's all, all peak Dunban. With that, our view, our pathway into Galahad Fortress is pretty much um, unspoiled. We can go over that way. Um, and like around that way, there is nothing over there quest-wise. There is some side stuff, uh, which I think we are woefully under level to actually deal with. Uh, so I will be coming back here in the future, don't worry. Through Sword Valley and Galahad Fortress, as I say, I'm, I'm basically just pushing on uh, straight onwards because there's so much interesting story stuff happening and there's a key moment I want to get to really before meaningfully doing any more um, side content. Um, 
Though, speaking of meaningful side content, we may well have finished, because we're about to... Yeah, hi, yes, perfectly. Um, we're about to enter Galahad Fortress, um, so let's finish up the Collectopedia for Sword Valley, which we happen to have just casually done. Good footing three. Uh, prevents blowdown. That can be occasionally helpful. Big ones like, you know, that Titan Stamp, for example, that the M104 Fortress unit um, used. That's a blowdown move, and being immune to that can be really handy for... Because the issue is then often you'll be blown down and they're dazed or toppled and by the time you recover from that they've got another bloody art ready and that's how they can just fucking rail on you. Auto heal up again always sounds better than it is. It's the auto healing outside of combat and so it's very useless. Um, first attack plus, occasionally handy, um, but mostly not. And then for strange we get art seal resist. Uh, not many things even cast art seal. What do we get for doing the whole thing? Cosmic nibbler. A nibbler that we can't use on Ricky because our enemies for the foreseeable future are all primarily mech on. Uh, but there we go. Doesn't even have a new appearance. It would be really nice. It's significantly better than the anti mech on one, but not worth using enchant all the time on, really. Um, which is something I'm going to complain about once we're into the fortress. Uh, but let's head into the fortress first. Here's our way in. There's no turning back. We can't let them find us. Let's move. Right. So, we have now found our way into Galahad Fortress. This is the thing we'll see, and I'll point out whenever it's uh, kicking around a bit. A lot of names to do with the Mechon uh, draw from King Arthur and kind of Arthurian myth. Um, Galahad Fortress being Sir Galahad, one of the Knights of the Round Table. Fiora's in here somewhere. Let's get looking. Keep your eyes peeled. I'm ready for anything. I'll trash any mechon that tries to mess with us. So, lift battle. Defeat mechon within Galahad Fortress to see if you can find a way to unlock the lift. It's got a bit of, you know, a Sylphco and Pokemon uh, feel. I do really like the fact as well that it, whenever you're in a new area, it shows you kind of where you are on the Bionis and now the, on the Mechonis. It's handy to see, you know, we're at the hilt of the thing now. New area, new Collectopedia as well. And it's weird that this doesn't apply to Sword Valley, but it does to Galahad Fortress. Have a listen if I start a fight. Everyone, stay on your guard. Leave it to run. That was nice, we actually got a full um, way of listening to it there. That is called Mechanical Rhythm, and it is the fight theme for Mechonis. Um, it's weird that 
Sword Valley doesn't have that. In some ways, Sword Valley, I guess if it's because of its function as the physical bridge between the Bionis and the Magonis, it kind of counts as a bit of both, um, which is slightly odd. Uh, I am going to switch up characters a little bit because we're about to do something tough. Uh, ooh, Melee has learned Reflection. This could occasionally be handy. Um, causes ether attack, especially ether barrier that causes attacks to rebound onto the enemy. It just reflects their attack at them. It's a really actually handy way of Melia changing the future. Um, that if she's going to be killed, she's going to be like, nope. Boing whip, back at you, uh, which is deeply entertaining. Um, let's level up Mind Blast a little bit, I think. And a bit more on Summon Flare, I do use that a fair bit. Um, really want an art book for Summon Earth before long, hopefully. Charlotte's also learned an art. She learned, ooh, Drive Boost, this one's actually quite handy. Uh, reduces the cooldown of all arts. Uh, in some ways, almost as useful as, almost more useful than Covert Stance to the point, well, because Covert Stance is no aggro, but this actually... Uh, I'm going to keep Covert's down for now, but I do really like Drive Boost, um, so it's very tempting to hang on to that. Right, let's just check everyone's all leveled up. It's nice to bring Purge up a bit higher as well, just because then the effect lasts longer. The longer it is, then it's like, if it's a, if it doesn't last very long, then what you often find yourself doing is you have to Purge and then spend the entire time that Purge actually lasts um, building the, the Monado meter back up again and then using it again quickly, uh, which is a bit annoying. Ah, Dunban has now learned Heavy Armor, which means uh, we can now, I think, have Ricky learn. I love how Ricky and Dundon have the highest uh, affinity, affinity at the moment. You know, Hero Pon and Hero Hom working together. You love to see it. And that is Heavy Armor for Ricky, spiky little bastard. I will actually... I'll retool him a bit later because I actually haven't got any... Actually, we have got some heavy stuff kicking around, as in stuff that is called heavy. Um, so I'll put him in some of that for now. Yeah, with Ricky's HP, high HP, giving him high defense is extremely uh, helpful. Anyway, I'm going to switch to Ricky himself, plus Melia, and Dunban. Because we got some fierce fighting to do. Because if we go through here, you will see, there's a lot of enemies in here. Let's have some fun. Yeah, love to see all these multi-combo hits hitting everyone. We should be ready for a chain attack now. Right. Hopefully AI Dunman has been clever and has used, um, what's it called? Um, has used Heat Haze. Ooh. And then we'll chain with Melia onto Grey, which means with Dunman we can now get three times Soaring Tempest with this many enemies around. Go. He had not, in fact, used Heat Haze, but we still got uh, a hell of a lot of chain damage there. Well, let's try and build up another chain attack. Quickly, let's use happy happy. Let's, there we go. That's what you love to see. We should be nearly ready for another chain tank now. The central mech on, by the way, is the one that holds the keys to the lift, uh, as you can probably guess. All the rest are just distraction, but they're all about to die anyway, so. Most of them are already dead. Not a tough fight, just a fun one. And there we go. For killing him, we get the fortress pass key, which is what we need for lift battle. Very nice. Alright, let's pick up their guff. Yeah, a lot of things, as you can see, drop cylinders here, so uh, I'm gonna... Before long... Ooh, every time that sh scares me. Before long, I have to do some serious crafting. The second Art Core Coil. That was difficult. We really helping Colony 6. Art Core Coils are an annoyingly rare collectible in Galahad Fortress, and you need two of them to repair Colony 6, as it's saying. Hang on to them um, whenever you come across them. Genuinely, they are particularly obnoxious. With that, let's head downstairs. So that completes a uh, lift battle, which then lets us open the lift. Wonderful. On we go. Galahad Fortress is all about descending deeper into it, basically, is how its its map um, works. So, are there sneaky bastards on either side? No, there's a locked door there, and an open door there, but we won't go through it quite yet, because we'll actually follow the quest thing for now, so we'll crack this open and see what we got. Where are we? Looks like the control room for an ether blast furnace. There, look at that. Hmm. So this is what supplies the Mechon with ether energy. Shulk, what's that? Oh, looks like fun. Ricky want to ride? We didn't come here to mess about, Furball. Time to bounce on. 
Hold on. If we can stop that piston, we might be able to shut down the blast furnace. Nice idea. Cut off the Mekon's ether supply. Ricky, say we try! Yeah, but... How are we supposed to stop something that massive? If we can stop the turbines driving the piston, it should work. And the turbines should be nearby. Right. Let's search for them. So, stop the turbines that are generating the power. Which gives us turbine battle. Investigate the two turbines to our left and to our right here to stop them. Wonderful. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit now, first off about, because I said I would, about the anti Nakon weapon weapons. It's nice that they do it. Um, oh, hello. Um, but it's also really annoying. Um, it would be better, and we do get this significantly later in the game. For now, we have no access to any anti mechon weapons other than the ones we have uh, now. It's not like these guys can drop, you know, anti mechon Biter 2 or anything like that. And it's infuriating that they can drop really good non anti mechon weapons, which then just feels really like the game is fucking with you. And it's nice to, yeah, not have the option of have the option of not relying on shitty AI Shulk uh, and his and his inability to use Monado Enchant. But that comes at the cost of basically not being able to upgrade weapons for a, like, significant chunk of the game to come. It's a bit annoying. Like, the Cloud Cutlass there, much better than what Dumbman's on. That should be an anti mechon thing, and I kind of assumed that when I first played this. I was like, well, surely any weapons that physically come from Mechonis are going to be able to penetrate Mechon armor. But no. Um, there's a really good thing, I think it's in one of the Warhammer books, which is, if, if in doubt about how an enemy's armor works, turn uh, the enemy's weapon against him. Uh, because the chances are the enemy's most powerful weapons and the enemy's most powerful armor will kind of arms race style have developed together. So whether your um, weapons can or not, there's a good chance that the enemy's weapons are probably going to be a decent crack against their own, ar own armor. Anyway, we've got a unique monster here, a Glacier Akon, um, who is level 52, who shouldn't be too much of a problem if Dundun can take the aggro, but I think he's used heat as haze. So let's chain attack and take advantage of that heat haze at least. Bitey bitey in the face. And then Melly cat. We're stuck on fucking knock on talk now I'm playing as Ricky. Yeah, it happens to you. And oh, what do I want to do here? I guess sneaky to keep the chain going. Yep, there we go. Don't worry, I am going to um talk a little bit about Mumka. I'm gonna talk about him a bit more next episode. Um I have to say. I disagree with Shock. When Shock is there blocking Dunban's sword, saying, No, now we know we're at their homes, we can't kill them. Um, it's a bit like... Spoilers if you haven't watched Avatar The Last Airbender. So skip ahead by, you know, 30 seconds. Very much like the end of Avatar The Last Airbender, uh, where it's like, No, we need to do this while maintaining our integrity of not killing bad guys. Um, but the realistic thing is... Mumkar is so dangerous, like he's a fucking deranged psychopath whose main motivation is to, you know, become the hero and take, and and specifically fuck up Dunban's life. Uh, ooh, blade gauntlets, there's another set of the blade stuff, and slotted um, blade armor would be nice, unfortunately. The guard is useless for the reason I just complained about. Ugh. Oh, we got a, a cloud cutlass is clearly a style for Dunban, the iron cutlass. Oh, that's actually quite cool, that gold sword, let's go for that for a bit. And the blade gauntlets give him strength up as well, so it's nice, nice and done man here. Maybe not as much agility up as I'd like, but hey, it's a nice um, set of things. And who is in medium armor nowadays? Is it only Melia in medium armor? I think I'm going to move Charlotte to being in medium armor. I think it'd be nice to have a more resistive Charlotte, so let's start, start that process. But yeah, and so because of that, I actually genuinely think that Dunban is, uh, Dunban, Mumkar is, is just from their perspective is too dangerous to be left alive and and should basically be be killed um it's safe that way and it happens anyway as you saw um in dramatic fashion of being skewered falling off and like that's i mean it's enough of an iconic scene for me to have named last episode after it of him screaming falling going not like this is is a is a great scene um let's go over here and grab no we can't go over there and grab some ether crystals because it's behind a little shitey thing that door is locked, um, so the only option we have for now is to go through this one to get to the um, button that'll turn off the turbines fully. Well, it will. Ah, shit! Oh, this is a new bit of music as well. Ah, 
So that music is called Irregular Bounce, and is basically the enemy surprises you uh, battle theme if an enemy starts a fight with you rather than the other way around. I really hate it. Uh, it's it's called Irregular Bounce because its beat is like off tempo, uh, and it's just an uncomfortable piece, and I really dislike it, especially because also I associate it with shitty mechon enemies starting fights with you, so... So there you go. Uh, let's finish off this guy again. There's these sentry units whose deal is to basically go and warn other mech on. But this one, like Mechanical Rhythm, the, the standard Mechonist fight theme, I really do like. It is quite cool. So, uh, with that, I think we're probably approaching the end of the episode. Uh, oh, daytime. Not that that matters. This is, again, a place that doesn't really have time at day, doesn't have any different music, and we'll listen to the music a bit more next episode, I think. Here at the Piston Control Room, let's turn off the Piston Control Panel. And there we go. That completes the story quest supply station battle. Nice one! We did it! This should prevent them from mobilizing any large mech on squads for now. Hopefully we've improved the Allied Force's chances. Hold steady, my brother. Friends, here, here! It looks like the door's been unlocked. Nice. Let's get down to the blast furnace. If we're lucky, Fiora might be down there. So, I'm just going to show off something we're going to interact with in the future, which is this here. There's a panel labeled Self-Destruct Device! that we can't currently use, um, but we will get to that given time. Let's head back to the piston room. Uh, oh, and that's spawned... wait, that hasn't spawned him back. Glacier Icon's there? He's supposed to be in the turbine room. Oh, well, we're not going there anyway. Um, as you can see, we need to hook around down here, so let's just do this towards the end of the episode. I thought I was going to end there, but I think I thought of a slightly better place of... I think I've thought of. Good one. Um, but let's just, if we go down here, oh here there are some bastards, let's fight these guys quickly. Someone learned a skill there, but I did not see who it was in that mess of visuals, so. Ah, we learned a greater chance of gold chests. Wonderful. Uh, what do we want? XP in from battles during the day, or now let's work on this flexibility. I don't know whether that's supposed to be, you know, like, emotionally or physically. Knowing knowing the little bastard, it could be either. He is extremely flexible. It's kind of his thing. Uh, here we are at the Ether input stream, and what we need to do... Well, what, I, what we need to do is head in that way, uh, but what I'm actually going to do is cross over the Ether input stream and avoid all of these mech on. Is that... Is that just weird reflections or are there item orbs in the Ether River? Oh, I got it now. Nope, it's just reflections of lights above. But fortunately, I got out before much damage was done. Dunman, let's just look at his health there. Dunman's actually got a surprising amount of health nowadays. To say the man always had terrible health was always his thing. Ugh, I've been irregular bounced and there's enemies in here, so let's kill everyone. I mean, this part of this music is just particularly weird. Sounds like some kind of like weird 70s prog album. And not in a good way. I genuinely like that kind of thing a fair bit at the time. This is just the weird shit. Don't be needed in that. More biters we can't use. And if we come up here, we will recognize... Oh, more bloody enemies, Jesus. I love how the little one's called the captain and the big one's called the production unit. That doesn't seem right. Well, weirdly, the captain did actually put up a fight, better fight than the bigger one, so maybe he is the real captain. But with him out of the way, what I was going to say is, here is that ether gear that we couldn't get to earlier, along with a couple of collectibles. And you'll notice we got a red collectible there, the safety device key. Maybe you can figure out what that's for, but we'll find out next episode. Hope you'll join me then when we'll be delving a little bit deeper into, well, to the bottom of Galahad Fortress.
Thank you very much, and good day.